Hey, good morning. This is Mayor Valensky with the Driving Market. Remember, anything said on this piece is an opinion only. It's for media publication, just to arouse some interest, get the channel going. It's not investment advice, not financial advice, and hopefully you subscribe, you enjoy it, and it'll give you a little bit of flavor to what's going on, whether it's in the crypto world, FX world, financial markets, and whatever else you're interested in. Okay, so let's get going. Um, Friday saw a significant rise in the stock markets, equity markets, and obviously in the cryptos. And what actually happened is there was developed a slight technical oversold situation in financial markets. And therefore what happens is that investors came in, traders came in and bought up some cheap stock. However, this is what you call a bear rally. I've mentioned this before, that when you're in a bear market and all the factors are pointing to the negatives, whether it's a recession or interest rate rises or inflation rises or oil going up, then that is essentially an atmosphere of a bear market. Um, there is a, within the bear market, obviously you can have bounces and you can have situations where the market's rallying. That's what happened last week. I mean, the whole of last week, what you had effectively is you had an interest rate rise across the globe, starting with the Reserve Bank of Australia, the RBA, where they increased interest rates by 50 basis points. And that obviously had an effect on the Australian dollar uh, because Australia overall has got lighter inflation than some of its competitors, but it's aggressively fighting inflation and you can expect interest rates to rise further in Australia. And then on what well, you did have, that was on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, you got the Bank of Canada. The Bank of Canada then rose interest, raised interest rates by 75 basis points to 3.25%. In Canada is one of the leaders in the West that is aggressively or more aggressively fighting inflation than any other country. So they're gonna continuously be pushing for higher interest rates in order to get their inflation under control. Um, during the um, Wednesday, you also had the Purchasing Managers Index. Now that is a measure of around about 300 companies, service and manufacturing in the US. And that came in better than expected. And that showed that the Americans are not going into recession. Remember overall, there is a fear that the world is going into recession. Technically, they have gone into recession because they had two negative quarters of GDP, gross domestic product. However, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris and the White House have changed the definition of what a recession is from two quarters of negative growth into some other superfluous measure that can't be measured and therefore it's a matter of how you feel and not going by the actual hard economic numbers but that's a Joe Biden situation in order that it doesn't um, dis it doesn't distress the US the US public thinking they're in recession but effectively by that measure alone they are in recession and then later on we've got the ECB which on Thursday came out with a 75 basis point interest rate rise and that is the biggest since 1999 now the problem is with the ECB is that as I've said before it's mixed up of countries in the West and in the East. Now, Eastern Europe has raging inflation, anywhere between 15% official this is, yeah? This is not the driving markets where I'm saying everyone's got 30% or 20%. This official in inflation is at 15%, around about 22%. Slovenia has got 22% inflation. And then you've got the West, which is Western Europe, which is Germany, France, Italy, running anywhere between 6.5% and running at about 9.1%, something like that, in Western Europe. Um, so they put up interest rates in the Eurozone, which is across the board. Remember, that covers the whole of the Eurozone. Their, their interest rates are running at 1.25%, which is still historically low. It's not going to help the Euro at all. The Euro is in a terrible state, being led by Germany, where Germany's economy is on the verge of going into recession and it's teetering there. Remember, Germany, Germany is the powerhouse behind Europe. If you take Germany out of the equation, then you've got no Euro and you've got no Eurozone and you've got no Europe and you've got no strength. You've got nothing there because Germany is the massive industrial powerhouse. Other countries just don't compete and can't compete anywhere near in replacing Germany as the powerhouse within Europe. So 
So the euro is going to be continue to be under pressure for those who are FX traders. And even though it's picked up a little bit against the euro dollar, it's still trending down. So to keep an eye on that one. Now, overall oil, we've got inflation numbers coming out this week. We've got inflation numbers out in the States on Tuesday and on Wednesday. You can expect them to be lower than um, they were last month because oil has come down. Now, oil has come down significantly and is now approaching the, or was approaching the $85 level, or $80 level. And there is a view that if it breaks below that, could all the way go down to $60. I don't hold that view, and I think that oil is actually going to go up, especially with the winter months. I ho I'm still holding that it's going to go above $100, and it's going to go more towards $120. But some of my colleagues and some of the peers within the group are saying, I've got it wrong, it's going to go down to 60 which could be the case. It's only an opinion. But oil is a major constituent as far as um, inflation is concerned. Now, what the UK has done, Liz Truss has done the most amazing thing, which all countries should do, by the way, is that she's going to subsidise the household energy bills to approximately maximum two and a half thousand pounds a year. It's going to cost around about a hundred billion pounds in order to do that. However, it may get more expensive as energy costs rise. The government will have to fund that or subsidise it. But all governments should be looking to subsidise their citizens. It shouldn't be a situation where the energy is just out of control and the normal household has got a regular fixed salary coming in, has a higher and a higher monthly energy bill on a monthly basis. It's not acceptable, it's not fair, and the government needs to do something about it. A lot of the time they say, where are we going to get the money from? We'll do what the UK is doing, go and borrow the money go and issue a bond, whatever has to be done, finance it at the court, at the government state level and get those bills down and give the public a chance to breathe on a monthly basis. Um, that's more or less it. Bitcoin had a massive day on Friday, up over nearly $2,000 in one day. Again, that's because there was a sell-off of the safe havens, the safety net, to say the dollar and, and uh, gilts and gold, all of that would be sold off and people took, investors went in on the high risk and crypto bitcoin is high risk and therefore you could see it float up to around about the 25,000 level and then again it becomes a sell so this week you'll keep an eye on inflation numbers you've got inflation in the uk which is going to come in about 10 point expected 10.6 percent and hopefully from next month it'll go down because the energy costs will go or the energy bills will go down it's taken up five percent out of about 5% out of the inflation figure, where inflation would have been in October about 15%, it's going to hang around about the 10%, 10.5% level. All right, that's it for now. Mayor Valensky driving markets. Have a good day. Keep on smiling.